everyone, it's Erin here. Welcome to uh, Memory Box Online again. <laughs> um, you got me this week and the theme of this week's activity pack um, is going out. So going out and having fun. Um, so we're going to have a little chat about that. Um, hopefully you enjoy this video. If any of you are party animals, then I'm sure you will. So let's get started on some of the things that I've got here, which we bought with us from our Memory Box collection. So I'm not sure about everybody else, but one of the funnest parts about going out, I think, is getting ready, especially if you can get ready with your friends. Um, I love talking about um, changing fashions and what people used to wear and how people used to get ready. So we've got a few bits here that I'd love to um, get everyone's uh, memories of and hear about that. Um, first question, I suppose, is, is what was your style? What's your sense of style? So thinking back to when you were a bit younger, maybe in your 20s or late teens, how did you wear your hair? I think hair is something that's changed a lot throughout the years. So um, I've actually done my hair today. It was a bit of a haystack. A couple of uh, fact sheets here about hair. <clears throat> On the back here is a lady's haircut. Lots of volume around the top and curled at the bottom. But some people might have had something different. So possibly a beehive, maybe in the 60s. Or if we're thinking back before that, maybe the 40s and 50s, you may have had your hair in, in rollers. Um, so using something like this regularly, or the smaller rollers, and putting those in to make sure that you keep your curls tightly to your head, so they would have been clipped in with a clip. Possibly put a hairnet over the top. Did anybody sleep with their rollers in? If you could actually call it sleep, because <laughs> I'm sure it's not very comfortable. But wearing rollers in your hair. So that's ladies' hair. Obviously, we've got some gentlemen's haircuts at the back here as well. Things like the pompadour, the jelly roll. I mean, a lot of those, I think, are quite popular now. Did any gents in the room have a haircut similar to one of these? They all look very smart. Reminds me of grease lightning, combing the sides of the hair. Did anyone use anything like pomade or brill cream? to keep their hair nice and slick back. <clears throat> this is a Morphe Richards hair dryer as well. So if you were lucky enough to have an electric hair dryer, there's the plug. That'd be nice and convenient to make sure that your hair was styled properly. But if you didn't have a hair dryer, it was just a case of sitting by the fire and waiting for it to dry. So these are hand clippers for the gentleman. Did you keep yourself clean shaven or did you have a, a moustache or beard? What was your sense of style? Did you take regular trips to the barber shop or did you have something of your own to make sure that you were always nice and smart looking? We'd love to know that as well. Once you finished doing hair, people might have done their makeup. So on top of my little jewellery box here, I've got a few pieces of makeup, some rouge, this one's bourgeois, some rouge, still got the little puff in there, a bit of powder for the face. And this is a mascara. I think if I pull that out like that, there's a little brush and I think you would wet the brush, to excuse me, wet the brush, then use this to apply like so. Did anyone use a mascara like this? Did you do a little bit of, little bit of spit to moisten it or did you use water from the sink? We'd love to know. So this one's a Rimmel, which is a brand that I, I recognise. What other types of makeup did you have? Bit of, so we've done rouge, Mascara, powder, lip stain or lipstick. Was anybody's parents quite strict with them wearing makeup when they went out? Did they have to go out in a, in a decoy outfit and then put their makeup on secretly once they were out of the house? I've heard a few stories about that actually. So with regards to what you might wear going out, did anybody make their own clothes? So uh, this probably applies to some of the ladies with their mum or did they ever learn how to make clothes? So I've got a swatch here of some lovely materials. Um, 
which may have been used for clothing or making dresses. Um, it's very soft material, so I'm assuming this is the kind of thing that we would use to make clothing, um, such as skirts or dresses. So what kind of clothes would you have worn for a night out? So I, I'm thinking things like circle skirts. So the skirts that if you were to sit down would be a full circle around your body with a petticoat underneath. Um, stockings, stockings with a, a seam at the back. Um, during the war or after the war, did anybody have trouble finding stockings? And did anybody have any ways of making it look like you were wearing stockings when you weren't? Did anybody get to get someone to draw a line down the back of their leg with something like a gravy powder or something else that would make a line? I've heard a lot of stories about that. And some people getting given uh, stockings from American soldiers that were here. If you, if you live near an American army base, perhaps they might give you stockings as a gift, which was really hard to come by then. So it's quite an expensive gift that you really were grateful for. We have a fact sheet here about fashion. So this one says 1940s on this side. 1940s fashion, there's a picture of a lady there. Very reminiscent of the era. So I'll read some of the sheet to you. So women in the 1940s aimed for an hourglass silhouette with masculine detailing. So knee length A-line skirts, victory suits, peak toe heels, loafers or oxfords, and seamed stockings. So we did just mention seamed stockings. So in terms of men, we had basic business suits, but the suits were very, uh, quite large and baggy. So in Britain, new jackets couldn't have pleated backs, metal zippers, buttons, raglan sleeves. Other popular styles were trench coats, bomber jackets, knitted undershirts, pea coats, and chino pants, and aviator glasses. So moving forward to the 50s, it's a picture of a gentleman there, looking very smart in his hat. Which to me looks like a trilby, but I do apologise if I'm wrong. A trilby hat. So women in the 50s, moving more towards pencil skirts, otherwise known as wiggle skirts, because of the wiggly walk, like a Marilyn Monroe walk. Or petticoats and full skirts, sweaters, or peep toe or rounded, rounded shoes with a chunky heel. And men, oh, it is a trilby hat, so men wore trilby hats inspired by the Rat Pack in navy, brown, grey and black. And denim, so denim came in style. Would you be seen regularly in jeans? That's the question. Like sort of everybody nowadays seems to live in jeans, so it'd be interesting to know what differences are between what people wear day to day now and what people were born then. It's quite different. Just a quick one for the 1960s. So as things changed, if anyone's a little bit younger, so the 60s, obviously we've, we've mentioned the beehive, the mop top made famous by the Beatles, the pixie cut. So a very famous model called Twiggy had a, had a pixie cut. Okay, in terms of hair. And the 70s, we've got the shag, AKA something worn by Jane Fonda. So that's obviously well, I suppose it's not really like mine, but very short at the front and very choppy and wavy. Um, different facial hair, so side brands, moustaches and beards. Or the page boy haircut. Did anyone cut their children's hair? I think nowadays people call it the bowl. So if, as if you'd put a pudding bowl over your head and cut around the edges of it. Which some people get quite embarrassed about having pictures of them with a the pudding bowl haircut, but there you go. It's the parents' fault. So where would everybody go on their nights out? So did anybody go to um, a local church dance, a local dance hall, uh, somewhere like the Guild Hall? Um, and what kind of dancing did you do? So um, I think some people know how to dance. I'm going to use this properly. <laughs> so things like um, ballroom dancing, so things like the quick step, foxtrot, um, something a little bit more exotic like the rumba or the samba. Does anybody know how to ballroom dance? And when did you learn? So it's a question for everybody. When when did you learn how to dance? Did you learn in school? Were you lucky enough to go to a dance class? And what styles of dance did you learn? So we've got some little shoes here. These are children's shoes. What shoes are these for? If you said tap dancing, that was right. <laughs> so these are tap shoes, little tap shoes. Did anyone learn how to tap dance? 
pause for a demonstration. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So there's tap dancing shoes. Does anybody still like to dance? That'd be an interesting one to ask. Does anybody still like to go dancing? Is it something that you carried on doing throughout your lifetime? So going on a nice cruise or going to a dance hall um, with, a, with a partner or a husband that, that enjoys dancing and doesn't have two left feet. <laughs> so a couple of the other bits I have here, um, we've got the microphone. So this is a microphone. I'd love to know if anybody enjoys singing and if anybody used to sing um, on stage or um, in local clubs to for people to dance to, um, or even working somewhere like a cruise ship. Lots of people did sing and entertainment on a cruise ship. So if anyone's into singing, I'd love to hear about that. So we've got our lovely microphone. Lots of people have given us some demonstrations on this microphone. Um, we've also got some binoculars here, some opera binoculars. So if anyone enjoys going to the ballet or the opera, I guess it would depend if you had the money to go to the ballet or the opera. So we've got some, so they click open like that. So these are some, some nice uh, pocket binoculars for looking at the stage. If you were, unless you were lucky enough to get a uh, balcony seat. Oh, and they've got their own box. Also got some cigars. So smoking isn't quite as uh, popular as it used to be um, due to obviously the health concerns, but these are a box of cigars with a really gentleman who, or ladies, but um, probably mostly gentlemen that used to enjoy a cigar, um, perhaps a special occasion or with a, with a friend. Um, there are two still in here, but I shan't smoke them because I don't really like them, but some people do. So. <laughs> Cigars and also cigarettes. I think this one, I do apologise if I'm wrong, but this is a a cigarette holder. So your cigarettes would go under the sort of metal elastic holder there and you could pop your cigarettes in there. There's a slightly more elegant way of keeping them as opposed to in a packet as you would, as most people would now. So lastly, this is a leaflet from a, uh, a chemist in London. The <clears throat> secrets of health and beauty at little cost. So it's sorts of hints and tips of how to stay beautiful. Um, I'd love to know if anybody has a secret to success, what their best tip is for looking good. Um, I think mine would probably be drink enough water. I don't usually follow my own advice though, so that's not great. Um, so it's talking about um, different ways to stay beautiful. I really like this one. It says, if you have white hair, um, in order to stay white, no yellowish tinges must be permitted. So use our recipe number 59 and in the water, tinge it with a blue bag. So I think it means the same blue bag that you would use for washing, which is which is quite interesting. I'm not sure I would recommend putting blue bag on your hair or on your skin, but maybe it works. Who knows? Um, and then how, how to whiten your skin. So I think young people now are kind of very... Um, brown and they like to be tanned so to whiten the skin rub into the skin a paste formed of equal parts of oatmeal milk and water and when the mixture is half dry rub with the tips of the fingers some dry oatmeal and massage gently until the oatmeal flakes off this will whiten the skin and soften it as well and buttermilk is a good bleach for the skin but it must be fresh so if anyone's ever tried that one let us know So I think let's end this one on everybody sharing their favourite piece of music to dance to. Um, perhaps if you have access to a music player, have a little sing song and um, think about the, the, the songs you used to like listening to when we went out. Um, and if you have any uh, stories for us, then please leave them in the comments or on our Facebook. We really love to hear them. So it's been really fun reminiscing with you all today and uh, we'll see you again next time. Bye. You can see the stage. <laughs>